In the previous episode, we talked about how to import Bootstrap inside our website before we get started on actually creating the website. And as you guys can see, we do actually have the necessary links here, you know, in order to get started programming. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to actually get started programming Bootstrap. So as you guys may notice, we do have a very basic HTML5 setup inside our index page here. Now, before we get started on doing any kind of Bootstrap coding, we need to make sure that this document is up to standard when we want to use Bootstrap. Now, a couple of things to notice is that we need to use HTML5 when we code Bootstrap. As you guys may notice, I do actually have an HTML5 setup up in the top where I have the exclamation mark doc type HTML, which is the indication that we're starting up an HTML5 document. Now we need to include a couple of more things before we get started, which is that inside the HTML tag that we have here, we need to include the language that we're using. So I'm gonna say language, and I'm gonna set it to English. Now the next thing we're gonna include is a couple of meta tags. The first one is going to be right after the title and it's going to be the charge set that we want to use inside the website. So we're gonna go ahead and set a meta charge set, set it equal to double quotes and we're gonna go ahead and say UTF-8, which is just a standard that pretty much everyone uses when they set up a basic website. Now we need to use one more meta tag, which is a bit more critical when it comes to bootstrap directly. So underneath our first meta tag, the meta char set, we're gonna go ahead and include a, another meta tag. Now this meta tag is gonna have a name. So I'm gonna say name is going to be equal to viewport. Now, as you guys may remember in the first episode, I explained that bootstrap is for mobile first meaning that when we do actually view a website on mobile, we need to make sure that the view that we see inside the cell phone is proportionally correct. So what we're gonna do with this meta char set is make sure that all devices view the website the same way. So the second attribute inside the meta tag is going to be content. We're gonna set it equal to double quotes. And the first code we're gonna write in here is going to be something called with equal to device dash width. So what we're basically doing here is we're setting the width of our web page to follow the screen width of the device we're viewing it in, meaning a cell phone or a tablet, okay? Now the second parameter we're gonna set is something called initial scale. And we're gonna go ahead and set this one equal to one. So what this one is basically doing is that the zoom level of the page when we first load it inside our device, whether it being a cell phone, tablet, or inside the browser, is going to be proportionally correct. So now that we have this code, we can actually get started on coding Bootstrap. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go down to my body tag so we can actually do our first piece of Bootstrap code. Now, when it comes to Bootstrap, we like to use containers, meaning that we have a for example, a div box or a div element that has a specific class which defines what kind of container we want to build for our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a div tag just so we have some kind of container. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a class name which is equal to container. Now, having the class container means that inside the CDN files that we have up here inside the CSS file, we load in a class called container. Now container sets a fixed width of our website, which is defined inside the CSS file we imported, meaning that the content won't go all the way to you know, the width of the browser. Now, if you want to have it as a fluid design, which I prefer to do in this series here, we can go ahead and set another class name called container-fluid, like so, meaning that all the content is gonna go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen with a small piece of spacing before it actually hits the, you know, the side of the browser because we don't want that. So what I can do is I can go inside this container we created and for example, create some kind of tag. I'm gonna say, hello world. And then we might have some kind of paragraph with some random text in it. I know this is just random. And what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and load up the website. So I'm gonna refresh and as you guys can see, we now get hello world. Now if it were to, well, we can't really see it right now, but if there were to be more content than just the hello world, this would actually be responsive design because if I were to resize the browser, 
it would actually change according to the browser width. So this is how we do the first setup when we want to start programming Bootstrap. So now we have a container, we talked about what kind of container we can use, and we talked about what's necessary to do inside the starting tags of our website. So if you guys enjoyed, I'll see you guys next time.